Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you all about resolution and picture quality. How can you tell if your photos are good enough to print in a photo book or on a photo print? Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so and check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. I also have a Patreon page now if you want to show your support for this channel. If you've been making photo books or you like to print your photos, you have probably come across the terms resolution or pixels. Many companies use these parameters to define minimum photo quality for printing, but more and more photo book companies and print companies are turning to emojis instead so you get a smiley face or a sad face when you're trying to print your digital photos. Although the emojis might seem easy enough to not care about resolution at all, but understanding the basic concepts of resolution are going to give you full control over the quality of your prints and you're never going to have to guess again whether your photo is going to turn out sharp or blurry when it comes out in print. When it comes to a great looking print, there are four main basic things that influence the final outcome. I want to mention all of those so you are aware of them, but I'm going to talk more in detail about resolution in this video. The first one is the shot itself, how well it's framed, what's on the picture, what angle you took the picture from. Now this is completely subjective and it's all about taste and art. So it's completely independent of resolution and it's not really quality in a quantitative form. So you can't measure the quality of a shot but you can decide yourself if you like it or not. The second thing is focus. Is your picture in focus or is it out of focus? Focus is not the same as resolution. You can have a very high resolution 40 megapixel picture but it's going to be completely blurred because focusing failed. You can see a picture now which is completely out of focus despite having a very high resolution. The third thing that influences the final outcome of a photo is exposure. Is there enough light in that photo? As you know by now photography uses light to capture photos therefore it's not just the available light that's going to influence the quality of the photo, but also the sensitivity, the light sensitivity of your camera. If your camera cannot gather enough light, it's going to look grainy or noisy. Now, grain is not the same as blurry because the picture is still in focus, but there's not enough information in each pixel to be able to show a clear photo. You can see a picture on the screen now, which is grainy or noisy. We call this noise and it should be able to show you the difference between a picture that is blurry and that is grainy. Again, it doesn't matter how big the resolution of your photo is. If it is grainy, it's going to look bad on whatever size you print it on. The fourth thing that I want to talk about today is resolution or pixel size. Resolution is the amount of pixels or tiny blocks of singular color that make up your photo. It's something that refers only to digital photographs. It doesn't exist in traditional photography and film photography. And the more pixels you have, the more detail your photo is going to have and the bigger you can print it out and the sharp is going to look on bigger prints. And this is the ultimate concept that we want to deal with today because it can get very confusing and when you print out photos it's very good to know the resolution of your photo and how big a print can be from that given resolution. So how do we measure resolution? Resolution is the size of a photo measured in pixels. For example, the photo shown on the screen is 4,800 pixels by 3,600 pixels. That means that in every single horizontal line, you're going to have 4,800 pixels or blocks of singular color. And in every vertical line, you're going to have 3,600 pixels. And if you multiply the two numbers together, you get 17,280,000 pixels. And that's the pixel count of your photo. This number is already a very good indicator of the quality of your photo, but it means nothing when it comes to printing without knowing the output size. Before I go to talk about the output size, how do you find out the resolution of your photo? If you use any kind of pro or semi-pro uh, software or apps like Photoshop, Lightroom, it's always going to show you the resolution of your photo. If you use a Mac, 
and you go into your finder and you click on a photo, it's again going to show you the resolution of the photo in the description. The same applies to the Photos app on a Mac and you can do the same in a Windows browser as well. So there are many ways to see the resolution of your photo. The problem comes when you use your smartphone, especially iPhones, because they don't show any information about the photo in your camera roll. So if you're making a photo book or a print and you want to upload the pictures from your phone, there are certain apps. I think one is called Metadata and the other one is Photoshop Express, which you can download. They are free apps and they show the resolution of your photos so you can access that information even if you are on the phone. Now let's talk about input and output size. So the input size is basically the pixel measurement of your photo. It's a digital measurement, so 4,800 by 3,600 pixels. The output size is the size of the media that you're going to print your photo on. So if you want to print a picture on a 10 by 8 inch size photograph, then the output size is going to be 10 by 8 inches because the picture is going to cover a 10 by 8 inch size paper. So how can you tell if a 4,800 by 3,600 pixel photo is going to be good enough for a 10 by 8 inch size print? This is when the terms PPI and DPI come into the game. They are also called pixel density. So PPI and DPI, which is pixels per inch or dots per inch, are used interchangeably even in the professional community, but they refer to a different measurement. They're very similar, but they mean a different thing. PPI is the pixels per inch, so it shows you how many pixels you have in every single inch of that photograph when you try to create a measured document in Photoshop, for example. And DPI measures how many dots your printer can print into one inch. So one is a digital measurement PPI and DPI is a physical measurement. They are very similar in concept, but they are not the same thing. Print companies usually give you a minimum quality resolution or pixel density that they say your photo is going to look good at when printed. And the industry standard for that is 300 PPI, which means you need to have 300 pixels in every inch for that photo to print out sharp. Now, how can you tell if your photo is 300 PPI? Remember, PPI is not an absolute measurement. It always depends on the input and output size. You can't have a PPI if you don't have an output size. So if I have a photo which is 4,800 pixels by 3,600 pixels, and I want to print it on a 10 by eight inch uh, piece of paper, then I have to divide the longer side by the longer side. So 4,800 divided by 10 is going to be 480 and that's going to be my PPI. So if I print that photo on a 10 by eight inch piece of paper, the PPI is going to be 480. Now to make it simple, uh, we're going to ignore any kind of aspect ratio and cropping. So just to understand the concept, but of course, sometimes the digital file is going to be longer or shorter than the output media. So you have to do some cropping where you lose a little bit of resolution. So if my PPI is 480, it means that it's well above the 300 uh, industry standard. So it's going to look very good when printed on paper. But what happens if I want to print this photo on a 30 by 20 inch poster? In that case, I have to divide the 4,800 pixels by 30 inches, and that's going to give me 160 PPI. In this case, my resolution or pixel density is going to be well under the industry standard. So my photo is not going to look as sharp or it might look pixelated. That's not a technical term, but that's what we use when you start seeing the little blocks that make up the photo because they are magnified and there's not enough detail in the photo to cover the area. So the key thing to understand here is that resolution means nothing if you don't know the output size, if you don't know how big your photo is going to be when printed. Let's put this into practice now. You're making a 10 by 8 inch photo book and you want to know if your photo is going to print in a good enough quality in that photo book. Now, it's not going to be as easy as in the case of a 10 by 8 inch print. Why? Because in a photo book, we can put photos in so many ways. I can insert that photo on a full page to cover the entire page. I can insert that photo to cover a double page spread, so the left and the right side as well. 
or I can insert that picture in a small box alongside 10 other pictures on one page. In each of these cases, the output size is going to be different, so the PPI is going to be different as well. So that means that in every single case that I mentioned here, the quality of the print is going to be different. And this is where it gets tricky, because in a photo book we put so many photos in so many different sizes that it would be very, very time consuming to calculate the PPI for every single photo. This is where the emojis come in very handy. So most photo book companies are going to give you a smiley face if the photo is above their PPI requirements and the sad face if your photo is under. But why is it still good to know the PPI of your photo? Let's say, for example, you insert a photo on a full page spread, one entire page, and you get a, a sad face. Let's assume that the company requires a minimum of 300 PPI. If your photo is 299 PPI or if your photo is 160 PPI, you are going to get the same sad face. However, the difference between 299 and 300 PPI is almost nothing and you wouldn't see any kind of difference with your eyes, but the difference between 160 and 300 PPI is much bigger and you would perceive the 160 as an inferior quality. Most smartphones and cameras nowadays take high enough resolution photos that if you insert them in smaller boxes into your photo books, they are going to look good whatever, unless you change the resolution by putting them through an app to put filters on or you download them from Google or you download them from Facebook Messenger because these apps have a tendency to shrink the quality of a photo. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you put your photo small into a photo book, into a smaller box, you shouldn't really worry about the quality. The problem comes when you put a photo on a full page or on a double page spread. That's when you really want to make sure that the photo is going to look good because it's really big and if the quality is not good, it's going to be very obvious. So if you get a sad face, you shouldn't necessarily abandon that photo from using it on a full page or a double page spread. Instead, you should try to figure out the PPI of that photo. And it's very easy because if a photo is covering a full page, all you have to do is use the photo book size as the output size. Or if the photo is covering a double page spread, you can just double the size of the photo book and use that as an output size. And if you get something in between 250 or 300 DPI, you can still go for that picture because the difference is going to be very small and chances are you're not going to notice any difference between 300 PPI and 280 PPI. If you get a number like 80 PPI or 100, then you know that photo is not going to look good. So this is why it's really good to understand resolution and be able to calculate your own pixel density to be able to tell if that photo is really going to look bad or is it just slightly under the requirements of the photo book company or print company where you're trying to print that photo. Another thing to consider is the type of paper you're printing on. If you're printing on coated papers, the ink uh, stays on very nicely and sharply, so the 300 DPI or PPI is, is kind of a good standard to stick to. However, if you print your photo books or prints on art paper or uncoated papers which have a rougher texture, the ink is going to slightly spread on the paper so it's not going to look as sharp anyway and the photo printed at 200 dpi is not going to look any worse than a photo printed at 300 dpi so if you print your photo books or prints on any of these kind of uncoated papers then you shouldn't really aim for uh, 300 dpi you can stick to 200 250 and also when it comes to wall art Think about photo books and small prints, you usually keep them at an arm's length distance, so you're going to see a lot of detail in those photos. However, when you have a poster or a canvas that's quite big and you put it on your wall, you're never really going to stand right in front of it and try to examine it from such a close distance because you want to see the full print as it is. So you're going to be at least three or six feet away when you look at those posters, hence the resolution again can be much smaller in the case of bigger prints because you're not going to look at them from such a close distance. So if you go for big posters, you can easily reduce the pixel density to 150 or 200 dpi. Again, it's going to be 
more than enough for a bigger print when looked at from a distance. Right, this was my rant about resolution. I hope it makes more sense now what resolution is and how you can figure out if a photo is going to look good in print or not and how to test whether a picture is going to fit a double page spread and um, what you need to know about PPI and DPI when it comes to bigger prints and different kind of papers. If you have any more questions about this topic, leave them in the comments. I try to answer them. There is also a written um, version of this uh, video on my blog thephotobookguru.com and um, thank you very much for watching and as always subscribe for more